the city of Timbuktu. Now, the great city of Timbuktu was located in Western Africa, eight miles north of the Niger River in modern-day Mali. By 1100 AD, the central city was constructed by the Africans of the region, which included the Mandika people, Songhai people, and the Tuareg people. Timbuktu was a center of scholarship under several African empires. The city rose to become one of the premier centers for knowledge and trade in the continent of Africa, and indeed the world at that time. Timbuktu also became a well-known center of Islamic learning and was the location of the University of Sankor Mosque, where scholars and students came to learn the Quran and Islamic theology, as well as mathematics, medicine, law, and astronomy. In addition, Timbuktu was a major trading center within Western Africa and formed part of the flourishing Trans-Saharan trade routes. Salt from the Tagaza area in the north was sold within the city, as well as gold, which was mined from the region of Mali, called Bambu, near the upper Senegal River. In addition, kola nuts from the forest of Akan were sold in the city, as well as grain and cattle from the south. Now, by 1235 AD, the Empire of Mali had been established within the region and took control over the city of Timbuktu. One of the kings of the Empire of Mali, named Mansa Musa, constructed one of his royal palaces in the city. Timbuktu became a place where many of the premier Islamic scholars from Baghdad in Iraq, Cairo in Egypt, and Persia came to learn and to teach. It was also home to several hundred thousand manuscripts. Mansa Musa constructed the three great mosques and madrasas of Mali, named Sidi Yaya, Jingerber Mosque, and Senkor Madrasa, all of which combined to form the University of Timbuktu, which is still operational to the present day. Although all forms of goods and services were traded within Timbuktu, some of the most popular items were books as there were over 180 schools within the city. By 1400 AD, the Senkor Madrasa had one of the largest collections of books in Africa, with over 700,000 books in its collection. The historian Leo Africanus reported the following regarding Timbuktu. In Timbuktu, there are many judges, professors, and holy men all being generously helped by the king, who holds scholars in much honor. More profit is made from selling books in Timbuktu than from any other branch of trade. Much of the learning in Timbuktu took place within the homes of the scholars. Knowledge was passed to students through a sequence of teachers known as Sisala, which means link or chain in the Sufi tradition of Islam which was very popular in West Africa at the time. The Sufi tradition is well known in Africa as the mystical dimension of Islam. And so, the students would listen and learn from the Sisala and write down the knowledge, study, and understand its meaning. By 1450 AD, the population of the city of Timbuktu had swelled to over 100,000 inhabitants with over 25,000 students and scholars. Once the empire of Mali declined, the next great empire of West Africa, called the Songhai Empire, took control of the city. The king, Askia Muhammad the Great of the Songhai Empire, was known to utilize the wisdom of the scholars of the city of Timbuktu and take them as advisors and counselors. Under the rule of the Songhai Empire, the city continued to flourish and Timbuktu still exists to the present day.